So today, we need this. I've got my palette, that's yesterday's colors. I didn't wanna waste this. And I also have collage material. This is a dressmaker's pattern. Here's some stencil material I must have. I just, I'm using like up little bits of what I have. I love using bits and pieces of collage out of magazines. I find that they really, they really add some interesting elements. So that's what I have. I have magazine collage pieces and um, and a few bits and pieces of my own papers that I've made. So I'm gonna put those to the side and we'll use them as we go. And then the other thing that you need, where did it go? Of course, it's right in front of my face. Extra heavy gel matte is my favorite because it doesn't tend to wrinkle the paper as much. However, any matte medium or glue will work. So I don't want you to get hung up on whether you have perfect supplies or not. Remember, we're balking at the idea of needing to do perfection. So I have a grid already laid out for today. As you can see, I just traced out my little post-it note. It's a perfect little square for this. And I do have these cheapy brushes. I don't use my good brushes with the extra, with the matte medium. The two colors I'm gonna use right now, I might use more, but the two colors I'm planning on using at the moment are green gold, and I'm using fluid today. Why fluid over heavy body? Everyone asks, the truth is, is this what I'm in the mood for? I tend to use fluid more than heavy body. In my art journal, sometimes the heavy body is better because it um, doesn't soak through the pages as much, but nonetheless, it just depends on my mood. And my little brush, I think I need one more color. What do you say? I'm gonna just put in, I'm gonna show you how we can mix using a limited palette. I'm gonna put a little bit of Payne's Gray on here. I've been doing all these peaches pinks and warm colors. So these are cooler colors for the most part. Payne's gray is a bluish gray. If you have any questions, please ask. I'm gonna try and pay attention to what you guys are asking at the same time as doing this demo. Green gold is a very yellowish green, very transparent. Transparent means how much you can see through it. See, um, on the golden fluids, you can see right here. Um, these stripes will tell you how transparent or opaque so that one's much more opaque and then our yellow ochre which is a very earthy color also pretty affordable to buy all I'm doing right now because I don't really want too much paint today is I am going to make some marks so yesterday I used my graphite pencil today I'm using marks just using the paint and we're going to see how that affects our choices and I am going to mix these because what's beautiful about limiting your palette and mixing colors is that you get all kinds of new combinations again see there's a very a mustardy yellow that's pretty a little bit of blue what happens then we have a deep sap green loosen up keep it easy Kind of let your intuition go. We're not filling up the whole page. We're maybe just adding a little bit of color here and there. And a little bit of water so that it's fluid. And it's whatever my mood says right now that I feel like I need to do. And that's what I'm going for. And I want you to kind of do the same if you're doing your if you're doing the same thing as I am and making little grids with limited palette, which limited palette will make for a better cohesive grid and artwork, let your instincts go and just make some marks that are interesting. So that's what I'm doing right now. Maybe get in here with some more yellow ochre, see how that changes everything. Okay, some pure blue, really skinny lines. That's one fun thing about the smaller brushes. And you know what I don't have on here? White, white will change everything. Now, now I have a really light blue. 
See what I mean by Payne's Gray is really just blue? <laughs> it's such a pretty color too. And it works great. This is such a great compliment. The blue with this orangey yellow. Ah, it's such a perfect mix. Now I want to add just a little green. Now we have this really great green. I'm going to add a little water. Well, I want this all to dry too as we go. You don't know how these are all going to affect your work until later. Okay, I want a little bit more of this blue, and then um, and then we're going to get in with the collage. So, as you can see, I'm leaving it very gestural, very much just making some marks that feel fun. I'm going to remind you all the time, our goal is to have fun. And if you're having fun and you're letting loose and you're allowing yourself to just play, you're going to end up with better work in the long run. You're going to teach yourself more. And that's what we want, is to teach ourselves through play and experiment. All right, so we've got enough going on here, right? Is that enough going on that we can start adding in some elements of collage? And I'm leaving my paint is there. I think what I'm going to do when this is all over, it will be off camera, but I'm going to continue to play with that paint. Um, I have all kinds of little fun, crazy projects that I've been working on. But I want to tell you, I'm building up to something. Right now we're doing lush landscapes. And in February... I will have my floral course. And if you want to join me for a floral course live, that's coming up too. Live as an in-person event. And then next summer I have a really special project that I'm working on to share with you. So uh, it's going to be a fun year. So the way I do my collages, I start using these layers to inspire the next layers. We have a pretty distinct color palette happening here, but we'll probably push out of the norm. I love to buy handmade papers at like Paper Source or any art supply store. It gives us a real kind of fun, fun, some fun textures, fun colors. There we go. And I do keep my scissors on hand if I want to keep kind of close. And I'm playing with all these layers now, so you can kind of see as I do this. Sometimes they come together quickly, sometimes they don't, and sometimes I just don't even keep going. I want that one that way. I just love those neutrals. See, we're getting in there with some neutrals uh, along with that bright green. This is going to give me ideas for future paintings. Hopefully you too. I work really big in the Lush Landscapes course with lots of, um, well, we work up to working bid. I have to be honest with you. We start off in module one practicing a lot of these ideas again. But that's because we need to practice. Um, where do I want to put this? Ooh, that's going to be interesting. How about here? Yeah, I love to just let whatever my first marks were, I let those be the inspiration for the next marks. See, one thing leads to another. I love to work in layers, and I'll even take those little bits. See, you see a lot of little bits here? That's because I'm going to keep building. Ah, look at how that texture just looks gorgeous. Okay, that's going to go there. So I don't mind covering up my paint. The paint was just the first layer to give me ideas. Kind of guide me. I love to do tone on tone. Noticed I used that yellowish orange next to yellowish orange. So I don't always pick contrasting. And this is how we build up those layers. One thing I'm really invigorated right now by is the new new color combinations I've been playing with. It's like, um, I just did that one there. I am trying to think of composition throughout the entire grid. That's my own personal choice. It's not necessary, but it is kind of fun when the whole grid kind of comes together. Yeah, all these new color choices. I have worked so much with using the primaries all this time. 
that being able to work with brand new color choices is kind of exciting. Ah, oh, let's see. Where do we want to be? Maybe like that. Ooh, that speaks to me. So I've been picking a lot more neutral colors and then mixing them with the vibrant colors, and that's really fun. It's really um, pushing me out of my norm, which is making me actually excited to get back in the studio again. I don't know how many of you have been paying attention, but I have taken a really long break from painting. As in, other than what I've needed to do for lessons, I haven't done a lot of painting at all this year. This is so fascinating to me. I love using home yard magazines uh, because there's always wood and nature in it. And this piece here, that color, I'm gonna just pull it off. We can get some dark value because of the magazine. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it, but I knew that was gonna be a really, ooh, that's pretty. I like those colors together. And, you know, when you go to translate these ideas onto your artwork, you may not be using collage again, but you might use those colors as inspiration. Like, look at how pretty those colors are together. You have mostly monochromatic and then that blue, and it's like, boom, zinger. It's really, it's really great together. Oh, yeah, don't forget we've got this. I love this because it's transparent. So if I put it over something you can see the colors underneath so which one do i want to use it on i think we'll start by using it over here i'm a little bit funny about how they go down that zipper is so awesome i used to sew i used to do all kinds of things i could can food and bake bread and sew and redecorate an entire house. In fact, I was just joking with my husband this morning when he asked me to iron a shirt for him, and I'm like, what is this, 2001? We're going way back in time, because I used to do all of that, a lot of homemaking stuff. And since I've been working full-time, he's really just stepped up and been amazing, but he's got a new job, and so when he asked... I was like, I'd love to do it because I love you, but not because it's my job anymore. <laughs> but back in 2001, I did all the homemaking stuff. Look at that. Perfect blue matches. Oh, that's great. Look. But then if we went back to 2001, we'd also go back to dial up. <laughs> I'm laughing at my own jokes. These are the kinds of things I want to talk about on my podcast, but I don't know if anyone wants to hear. It's the it's the evolution of a life of an artist, of a business. It's how everything unfolded. That's why it's going to be called Unfold with Kelly Wynn. Two beautiful sides on this. Which do I pick? The colors are perfect. Oh, man. I think we'll use this here. Maybe a little higher. I don't know. We'll just put it down. Don't overthink it, folks. Don't overthink it. So I hope you're ready. January, not till January, that's when we'll do the podcast, okay? Date. Tell all your friends, be ready. We're going to have a wild time. You're going to see it all unfold. Ah... Uh, Ooh, that's beautiful texture. That is the back end of a white bear. But look at when we tear it down, how that texture just looks gorgeous. It's fascinating. Which way do I want to use it? Ooh, I want to use it over here without a doubt. Look at how it just perfectly goes in. So you have to have an eye for this. Eventually, you'll, you'll notice all these little fun ways that color and pages and marks and whatever it is that you're doing. That color is so perfect. Sometimes I even include the letters, even if they don't make any sense. But look at how that those letters match that color. And it's like, oh, it's calling to me. It's calling to me, folks. 
So is this fascinating to you yet? Are you bored yet? Tell me, tell me, what do you want to know? What do you want to know about the process of making art, the process of making an art course? How I got into what I'm doing in the first place? I'll tell you, I'm a fourth generation artist. My great grandfather, my great uncle, and my dad were all professional artists. Um, I love that looks like a little neck um, collar. Let's just use a little bit of it on one of these. I want the black lines because that's where the interest is. I think I was going to put it there, but I'm going to put it here instead. I'm looking for some yellows. I don't have a lot of yellows here, but what do I have? I have more of this orangish color. That's that leg. Hmm. Getting tricky. Right through the middle. I actually kind of like that. All right, I don't want to go too long or too far on this. I just want to make sure each of these squares has something for inspiration. That's great. We'll just cover up there a little bit and then watch how this just kind of becomes a really cool, almost landscape. The whole goal of these were to make them look a bit like landscapes. You don't have to when you're doing these grids. You can do anything you could do floral, you could do non-objective abstract. Um, it really, it does not have to be something recognizable at all. It's about getting your colors and ideas together and creating something interesting and different to give you a launching place for your next project. All right, I'm taking these little bits and pieces. Okay, what would this be without some pink? All right, shall we do the pink? I know I had a limited palette, but we can, we can break our own rules. I feel like there's already a bit of pink in this, just with the orangish pink. This is more of a coral pink anyway. Perfect. That'll do, that'll do. And this one here. I love this paper. Where's the best paper? Italy, Japan, France. Tell me where I should go. Maybe I'll go on a paper hunting trip. Why am I obsessed with paper? I don't know. I did clean out my studio and I got rid of a ton of stuff, but the one thing I did not get rid of is any of my pattern paper. <laughs> None of my handmade papers that I've collected all this time. Who needs another little spark? Maybe here, yes. We haven't even done anything over here. So this can take a while, as you can see. If we're... All right, look at this. This is like river running over rocks. It's got that beautiful blue. Look at how that texture really can stand out in this. But I don't want to overdo it. I just want enough for it to, to really... work. There we go. See how it changes a piece? I love it. All right, I'm having fun. I hope you're having fun, but I, I'm like, really, I'm, my whole art practice has been invigorated in the last couple of weeks as I've been finishing up this landscape course and exploring new color combinations. Um, and really, you know, I was in a, such a slump this year, but Seeing how um, sometimes it just my own rule. You just got to get in and do it for it to, you know. I want you to notice that none of this is about perfection. None of this is perfect. But in the end, it's creating some really gorgeous compositions. My great uncle. So I went to visit him. It was 2012. I wanted to come back to, to making art on a regular basis. I'd made a little bit of art here and there. I'd taken a few more classes. So 
it had been many years since my kids were little um, or born that I had even made any art at all. And I was visiting him out on the West Coast. And I said, I was reading in a book. And I saw this on Pinterest. And I was watching this one artist on YouTube. And I kept telling him all the things that I was learning and studying. And he was like, whoa, wait a minute. Stop. You have to make art, Kelly. You have to make the work. Get to busy. Making the art. Make a hundred pieces. And then make a thousand pieces. And it was like, at that moment, I was like, oh, yeah. I'm, I've been afraid this whole time to make to make the work that I want to make. I, I was reading how to make brush strokes. Come on, you guys. How do you make a brush stroke? Take a brush, put it in paper, um, in paint, and put it on paper. That's how you make a brush stroke. But in, in all honesty, I know that as artists, we freeze up. Even I did. I had taken such a long break that even I freeze up. And, um, and it was that advice to just get going and make the work and make a lot, a lot, a lot of work that made a difference. And so I will say that's the best advice I can get. How do you find your voice? Make more art. Uh, how do you figure out how to paint? Make more art. How do you get over the nervousness of making art? Of not knowing what to make? Of fear of wasting time? You just have to get in there and make more art. Literally, that's the only solution that I can think of. You just have to make more art. Okay, I'm going to stop with the collage. Even though I could keep going, but we don't have all night. I have to go and make dinner for kids. I do. This thing called dinner every night, it just keeps happening. <laughs> I don't mind it, though. We actually... I have... I have a HelloFresh waiting. I'm just gonna make a little quick meal. So I wanna add in a little something and play with a few few of these last bits. I will say I feel like I need a little more of the pink in here. I know a solution for that if I wanna pull it all together. So right now I'm just adding a few more colors, maybe a little more paint. I don't feel like I really need much. I love the polka dots too. I like that that's really soft right there. What about this? Take it. Add more polka dots. Get crazy with it. All right, I have pink because I added a little bit of pink. It would be really fun to pull this together visually and so that um, and then I have better compositions by using this last bit. It's oil pastel, one of my favorite things. In a few little spots, this one's a little softer, pink. That's nice. That's a pretty color. I love this. I really want to leave that light. What if I just... So I'm thinking about a future composition where we have this really dark mark here versus the light in the sky. Maybe a little more of this yellow. Oil pastels, Coranda Osh, by the way. Okay, you guys, I'm coming to the end of this, so if there's something else that you're really curious about, you want to know, I'm going to pull out, like, maybe a little bit of blue. I don't use blue a whole lot lately, have you noticed? It's just not been my thing for some reason. But we all have our phases, but I'm going to stop. Did we do it? I think it's got a really cool vibe that's very different from yesterday. Look at this is why we do this. Look at how different this is from this. Now we have some of the same shapes, but our colors are different. Our compositions are different. It's going to push you into ideas. Like for me, I'm like, oh, I love that green and kind of a peachy, yellowy cream. Here's some really fun, just a teeny little blue. So you got to look at each one of these compositions and what you could do with it. 
That would be really gorgeous too. That one, look at that orangish yellow next to the blue is just fabulous and those little teeny dark bits, that's like bam right there. Do you see it? I think sometimes we have to like crop our own to see where those really interesting compositions are. Some of them may be a little bit weaker, maybe a little messier, not our best ones. Like this one, it's okay. It would really need to be pushed into another direction. Maybe it just needs that layer of pink, probably. Look at how that changed it. So this is what I want you to do. When you do these, look at everything. Look, did you get a dominant color for each one? That one obviously is the greens and creams and that's the pop. Dominant blue. Did you get a dominant color for each one of your squares? Overall, they might be blended. Did you push the values for light and dark? Dark, light, dark, dark, but then this is light and that's bringing in did you push the values? Are you looking at the composition so that, you know, you have an interesting way that your eye can kind of move through the piece? These are the things that we do when we create this. So I hope this was helpful.